Okay, so I decided to wake up this morning and I am going to go visit Goldfield Ghost Town. It's out by Apache Junction. It's a 36 minute drive from where I'm at, so that's where I'm heading. Okay, so I am swinging by Safeway real quick. I'm going to stop and grab a few little snacks. I don't plan on buying anything at that little shop there because I know I could probably get, get a little expensive. So that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm heading to Safeway. Okay, let's head into Safeway. Get something to eat because I am starving. Okay, let's see. I'll probably go and get some like nuts and berries or something like that. Uh, let's see, that's the chip aisle. I do want to grab a drink though. Let's see. So we'll get a Gatorade. Let's get a fruit punch. Okay. Let's see. Okay, let's get some of these. Not bad, cheese and nuts. Okay, so I just got out of the Safeway. Now on to our destination. Okay, so I made it to Goldfield Ghost Town in Apache Junction. Um, so far, there is no entrance fee that I see or that I had to pay, but I'm going to go back to the road because I want to get some few pictures, and then I'm going to take you guys around and show you what it looks like. Okay, here's the entrance. Um, they do have Jeep tours. They have a, like a lot of little shops. because there's tents here too, people camping out. I don't know if there's a cost for that, but as you guys can see at the distance, there's RVs and tents right over there and trailers for anybody who's interested in that. Superstition Mountain. I guess there's supposed to be gold buried there. Nobody's found it. But let's go take a look. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it, it goes all the way through. That's interesting. So they do also give train rides here. I think it's like $8, but I'm not quite sure. I'll put the link to the website below.
on it. There's an old wagon. Okay, so this is the miner's grill that you're looking at. If you want to get something to eat. I guess they offer mine tours here as well. Huh, I wonder how much it is. So the miners grill, I'm going to take you guys up and check it out. Prices are a little high. It's the very reason why I brought my own food. Wow. Okay, that's the cost of the mine tours. Eight dollars for adults, seven dollars for seniors, and five dollars for kids. We're gonna go down and take a look at the mine. Go around the corner about 25 feet, stand on the right. Don't go any farther than my car, please. Stand on the right side, please. Right side. Thank you. This is a star drill they used during that time there. It's a short two-footer. They used this to start off with and when they had limited clearance. It takes one man to operate it. You hit it with a four-pound sledge and turn it. Then if you wanted to go deeper than two foot, you graduated this rod here, which is a seven-foot rod. It took two men to operate it, one man to hold and turn it, one man on the end with a 15-pound sledgehammer. Took quite a period of time this method to go six foot back in solid rock. Very time consuming. Then the result ram introduced the jackhammer. Made things a lot easier and a lot faster. The only thing is it caused a couple problems. 
it would get the drill bits hot and they would fail prematurely. So I didn't make the mine owners very happy because it's pretty expensive to replace at that time. Also, it created a lot of dust, a lot of small particles of rock, kind of like ground glass. And the miners would inhale that and they'd come up with a lung disease called Kukakas. Once they was diagnosed with that, usually had less than six months to live. Mine owners kept complaining about their bits failing prematurely, so Ingersoll Ram introduced water. That made the mine owners very happy because water cooled their bits and made them last as long as they were designed to. Also, it helped the miners by depleting the dust, and they had a 95% less chance of getting the lung disease, so it was a win-win situation. Any questions? Well, follow me down here. Oh, six foot back in solid rock. They'd use from two to eight sticks of dynamite for holes in the corner of how hard the rock was at that time. They'd load every hole with the center hole. They always left that one empty because when dynamite goes off it, it floats. It's got to have some place to go. If you load all 21 holes, you'd end up cracking the wall and the ceiling and causing a cave in. All the primer cords was different lengths because the ones dynamite go off in sequence. They didn't want it all go off at one time. So when they lit the fuse, they had 55 seconds to get this as far away from the blast area as they could. The first ones to go off would be the burns, and they would implode in. Then we had the roof eyes and the knee highs would go off, and they would implode in. Then we had two holes at the very bottom, which we call lifters, and they actually did what their name says. They'd actually lift the ore up and place it out here on the floor. So prior to blasting, the miners would pull in a piece of sheet metal for the ore to fall on, that way it made it easier for them with their flat shovel to scoop it up and put it in the ore carts. Any questions? Okay. Sometimes you see a little glimmer in his eye when you speak to him. If you ever speak back, let me know, but I want to lead the way out of here. <laughs> Call this room the glory hole. This is where the widest veins of gold was extracted out of. That's the reason it's such a large room. They wanted to make sure they got every ounce of gold they could out of here. But when they got the rooms this side, they created a problem on how to shore and timber it up, keep it from caving in. So a German by the name of Von Switzer studied bees for a number of years, and he came up with this style of framing. The kind of replica is the honeycomb of a beehive. It's called cross-center fit timbering. All the timbers are the same length, same diameter, beveled on both ends the same way. There's not a nail, screw, bolt, or peg that holds them together. They all interlock like Lincoln logs. <laughs> keep it structurally sound, you gotta keep shims in the sidewall and in the ceiling. You can't have very little movement of this kind of construction. Now I'm gonna share a story about James Stevens on July 4th. 1893, James didn't want to participate in the 4th of July festivities. He wanted to come into the mine. So before you're in the mine, he got his gallon of water, his three candles, and his hammer. One of James's regular duties was to inspect the timbers. He had done that for a number of years. So all he had to do was tap on one of the timbers and he could deem what it needed to shim in the side walls or in the ceiling. Once he got all his shims placed, how he would inspect his work, the very next morning he would come down, if there wasn't any shims in the floor, he knew he'd done an excellent job. But if he found some shims in the floor, he knew he had some problems, loose rock, loose timber, and he had to correct that before the miners could start their day. On that very July 4th, James was down approximately 275 feet when the mine caved in. They heard a rumble of the earth, seen a cloud of dust come up out of the shaft, so all the miners come running over. They knew James was still alive, but they could hear him down here with his hammer. So they started an alternate shaft and they dug for eight days and on the eighth day they hadn't heard anything out of James so they started to get a little bit concerned, wondering something that might have happened to it. But most of the miners would want to give up all together and go mine, back to mining for gold, but all of a sudden there was James again. So they dug another five days, a total of 13 days to get out of the level where James was at and they found him and he was still alive. He conserved his water, he had 83 candles, because at that time they was made out of animal fat. All the livestock they brought into camp to feed the miners, they slaughtered and rendered the tallow down and made candles out of it. That's the reason they was limited to three candles per miner per ship, because there's a limited supply. 
When James got down to mine on that 4th of July, he weighed 150 pounds. When he left 13 days later, he weighed 98 pounds. He lost over a third of his body weight. Lack of food, lack of water, but the most contributing factor was the temperature. It ranged between 104 and 125 degrees down here. It was like being in a giant sweat box. So James got out alive, he vowed never come back down into the mine. So he done all his engineering above the ground from that on. But the miners. <laughs> I said, I don't remember that girl in my shirt. Okay. <coughs> I think that water comes out of dirt. What it is, what happened. That's what I kind of figured that way. Before, we'd have a tendency to pick it up and put it in our pocket or put it someplace, hope we get out of the mine with it. So, a room about this size before they let the miners leave, they have to come up here. Take all their clothes off and they'd do a strip search. If they found any gold on them, they'd take them out that door and hang them. <laughs> it was a hanging offense back then. <laughs> but they never hung anybody in gold fields or Youngstown, but they continued to lose their gold. And my ideas are they swallowed it and collected it later, but I think the majority of went out that honey way. But you gotta think, who's gonna check that real close? Yeah. So at four dollar a day honey delivery, these gentlemen got the big house on the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes crappy jobs pay off. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, so I just got done with the gold mine tours and now I'm just gonna go around and look at the rest of the gold field ghost town and just check out the rest of it. So far it's pretty neat. Um, yeah, we're just gonna go take a look around and I'll show you guys the rest of it. Okay, gold panning. Prospector's Palace. Let's go take a look and see what's inside. Just give you guys a look around. Okay, so you can pay seven dollars per pan or three pans for twenty dollars. You can also do a tiny town train ride. Oh, look at that. Huh. It's a zip line. How interesting. <laughs> that looks like fun. The mystery shack. Wonder what that is. The last dig. Let's go into the last dig. Oh, that's 
a little cemetery. I don't know if there's really people buried here, but or if it's just kind of like a remembrance of the people who died here. It's an old train track. an old wagon. There's the Goldfield boarding house. You wanted to find a room for rent. <laughs> There's the antique photography little shop. Here's the bank. Time after time. That's really interesting. Look at that dress. can have your picture taken. Hmm. That's the cost of the pictures if you want to have them take them. Soap, skincare, Rahani, handcrafted items. Okay, so I guess they're having a gunfight, so let's go check it out and see what it's all about. Don't do it. <laughs> 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 
the gun. Yeah, she's crying. Yeah, baby. We're going to fail here, Nathan. I want to turn it down a bit. We've got these balls rolling. Please go over the little ears. And if you have man's best friend, hang on to the fight. Don't be hazy in that song. We're going to get down the street. We're going to get down the street. The first family around here, the base of the Super City Mountain, Caulfield, 1893. Sounds like that, but Okay, so apparently in that one little shop they didn't want me to video record, so that's why I had to stop the video. So watch your ears, folks. I'll whistle. I guess they're about to do another gun show. I guess
guess they do them every half hour or something like that. I'm not gonna record inside the little shops because I think they might have a problem with that, but I'll just show you guys like the outside of it. Yeah, the bakery. Ghost Town information. If you want to find out more about it. There's the saloon over there. There's the little jail. There's the gallery. Paints. Lots of portraits. Could take some horseback rides too. You could do trail rides. I'll show you guys the prices of those. Here's the prices. If you guys feel like horseback riding. guys want to go see some live reptiles but I won't go in there I don't think they like cameras inside the shops
That's a neat little wagon. Look at that one. It's different rocks. church over there. Oh, looks like a whole bunch of them got broken. There's the shooting gallery over here. Okay guys, so that was pretty much it of the Goldfield Ghost Town. Um, I showed you everything that I could. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. It was a really neat, awesome place to visit. So just an overall rundown, there's no entrance fee, no nothing like that. The only thing that's going to cost you here is if you want to go on the my tours, if you want to do the train rides, if you want to buy food here, that is the only thing that's going to cost here. Otherwise than that, the parking is free, the entrance is free, um, you can definitely look around the little shops and all, everything that they have here to offer. It's a really neat place to visit, so if you guys are ever in the Apache Junction in Arizona, come down and see it. It's a really neat historical town.